there, welcome to the Inquiring Minds channel. My name is Anonymous, and he's back with another fountain pen review. After having so much fun playing Santa and praising some of his best fountain pen experiences of the year in last week's Top 10 Fountain Pens of 2021 video, Inquiring Minds has left it to me, Anonymous, to play the Grinch and say some nasty things about his worst experiences of the year. Mr. Inquiring Minds has been taken to a secure, undisclosed location, so no one will know who made these awful remarks about their favorite pens or their favorite pen companies. And also because one of the pens was a gift, and one of the pens was a loan from friends. He apologizes unreservedly for being so ungrateful as to diss your pen or your gift. Mr. Inquiring Minds worried about the huge number of fans, of one of the pens on this year's hit list, as the pen is widely regarded as one of the best and most popular fountain pens in history. But these are his personal experiences, and what may be a holy grail pen in the world to you might be just a big disappointment to someone who shall remain nameless. And just a reminder that YouTube has eliminated the thumbs down button, not the count, just the button, so feel free to smash away on the dislike button as many times as your little heart desires, because no one will know but you. Not even anonymous. Feel free to add your comments below and say whether you agree or disagree with these findings or, what is more instructive and entertaining, state your worst fountain pen experiences of the year. No one will come after you, I promise. What pen blew up in your face or refused to write for you even though you spent hundreds of dollars on it? So continue watching if you dare. And let's get the mudslinging started, right now. So these observations are in no particular order, but I am leaving the most popular pen until last. Skip ahead if you want to get angry with me early. I have to say that the good news is that this year was very difficult to get a list of 10 pens. It could be because I'm getting smarter, and refusing to spend good money on what I know to be cheap garbage. Or even expensive. Well, not garbage, but overpriced pens. I think I learned my lesson with the Visconti Van Gogh Starry Night that I bought about three years ago. I successfully sold that pen this year. That pen was not garbage, but it was certainly overpriced and I didn't use it very much. And now it's in a very happy home. I'm going to start with a couple of pens that really piss me off. Not so much because they aren't very good, and they aren't, but mostly because of how the sellers are misleading the customer about the product. The first one probably pissed me off the most because I gave the pen the benefit of the doubt when all of my spidey senses were tingling and there was a red alert in the back of my brain about it. I'm getting a red alert right here. The thing is dangerous. This is the Aaron Flex Pen. Here it is. This pen was offered to me for free for evaluation. I know the pen was given to some of my colleagues as well. When I got an email from the representative of Aaron Pens with the offer, I took a look at the photos and the website and I asked a number of questions. The email I received back confirmed my suspicion that this was a Chinese made pen with a flex nib almost identical to the Lorelei 349. Here's the Lorelei 349 and the Blue Dew Flex Pen. I was asked by the representative of the Aaron company to keep certain information secret and I complied. It made me suspicious as to why the company was keeping secrets. I shared the email with Stephen Brown who also received the same answers to the same questions. In fact, his email was identical to mine. Cut and paste company boilerplate. No, 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 no. In my review, I articulated my suspicions that this pen was made by the makers of the Lorelei and the same as Blue Dew, except that the Blue Dew company made customizations to the nib that made them flex better, therefore added value to the product. After my review aired, I received a comment from a viewer that they had purchased a Lorelei from China and received a Blue Dew branded pen 
uh, with all the customizations and everything on the nib, as if it was the Lorelei 349. This pretty much confirmed my suspicion that both Blue Do and Aaron Pen were reselling an inexpensive Chinese flex pen with some significant markup. As to the Aaron Pen itself, I'm not thrilled with this pen. It's heavy and clunky, the nib doesn't flex well, and it's so scratchy it's just unusable for me. So buyer beware. I was told that Aaron Pen was designed in Australia and the company is Australian. I've been informed by some of my Australian pen friends that they seriously doubt the company has anything to do with Australia and their website won't take Australian dollars or charge Australian VAT to Australian customers. QED. So what is the verdict on the Aaron Flex Pen? No, 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 no. And on to the next. This pen is in the same category of pen that is wildly overhyped to be something it isn't, just to justify a hefty markup. This is the Golden Writ Sketch Writer Fountain Pen. It was gifted to me by pen friend and subscriber Dean Andrioli, and I'm very much appreciative to Dean for his generous gift because this pen does have one big redeeming feature the number five size Bach titanium nib that comes installed. In fact, that's the only redeeming feature of this pen. And that is why the Bach nib isn't on this pen right now, because I pulled it and put it on my Hongdian General Black. And it is perfect and wonderful. It's on loan to pen friend and sketch artist Janice Butterworth, and she's enjoying it very much. But the fact remains that the Golden Writ Sketch Writer is an inexpensive Chinese-made pen that is heavy, unbalanced, and clunky. The section is narrow, and the cap threads are sloppy and awful. The worst part is that the website hypes this pen as being specifically designed after years of research to be the perfect sketch pen for artists. And it's a total bargain, being marked down from $250 US to the bargain basement price of $75 US if you act now. The hype, misdirection, and misleading advertising just makes me steam. And I've never been so humiliated in all my life! But $75 is in line with some good pricing on a number 5 size Bach titanium nib, if you just want to buy the nib. Of course, you'll have to find a pen that will accept the number five size nip. If it is a bargain too good to be true, it usually is, so buyer beware. You see a lot of this kind of hype, especially on Facebook. There's a Facebook advertisement that comes around all the time from a group called Too Shiny For Ya, and they offer Jinhao X450 and X750 pens, among others, with different exotic names for free. You just pay the shipping of $24.95. Of course, you can get these pens for $5 US with free shipping on eBay. Good pens, just not worth $24.95 US. So the verdict on this pen? No! Now for a couple of pens from our friends at Moonman. Majon, or Mojung. Majon, after copying the Parker Duofold and Leonardo Momento Zero in 2020, has been busily copying Mont Blanc in 2021, so much so that a viewer suggested I call them Moonblocks. I like that moniker and I think it's stuck until they change their name, of course. The problem is that the Duofold and the Memento Zero are good pens. Some of the Montblancs my John has decided to copy this year aren't. Well, at least I think they aren't because Moonman seems to like to copy things down to the flaws and these pens have flaws up the yin yang. First up, the Moonman M1000. I've been making fun of this pen since I reviewed it. I've been calling it a doorstop. I think what made me angry was the price tag for this heavy paperweight. I wasted $67 US plus shipping for this behemoth. Yes, it is a very close copy of the Mont Blanc Lobarac, that is roughly 25 times the price of this one. But would anyone seriously think you have a Mont Blanc Lobarac on your desk when you wield this thing? Even as a paperweight, it's overpriced. And the $67 is just because it has a Bach nib. And this particular Bach nib is awful. The pen is unbalanced, overweight, won't post, scratchy, and has a slippery metal section. All those are on one side. The 
Maybe some of them are unimportant. I won't argue about that. But look at the number of them. And add to the bad experience, the wood had a crack in it right out of the box. So to exact my revenge, I keep it around so I can randomly ridicule it in my video reviews. And the inquiring mind's verdict on this pen is... No! The second Moon Man of shame is the F9 Snake. Here again, Moon Man, or Mad John, slavishly copies another Mont Blanc discontinued fountain pen. But the good news here is, for those who want to fool people into thinking they have a Mont Blanc, this Mad John is 132 times less expensive than the Mont Blanc. But the downside is, you still have an unbalanced, thin, slippery, metal sectioned, unpostable, piston filler fountain pen with an ink capacity smaller than a small cartridge, a cap that takes three turns to get off, and a clip that, although it's cool and a snake, is unusable. And the inquiring mind's verdict on this pen is... No! 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 Oh yeah, and the finial looks like a staples button. No, 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 no. It does come in a cool box, though. And the nib has a snake on its face. As for Harry, I'm the guy with a snake on his face. The good news from Majon is that they are now going after Kaveco with the new Majon RS1. It's funny how Moonman didn't seem to have any intentions of copying the venerable Kaveco Sport until Kaveco grabbed the trademark on the name Moonman and sued Moonman to cease and desist. So they changed their name to Majon and immediately copied the Kaveco Sport. Mine arrived just yesterday. It is good that the Kaveco Sport is a cool little pen with few flaws, but Majon has made this metal, and at first blush, this is a really cool pen. I think it's actually cooler than this Sport. It occurs to me that all these pens are Chinese. I'm at risk of losing my Chinese Pen Fan Club pin at this rate. And without that pledge pin! And the next Chinese pen company is Hero. And this is the Hero 360. And this is just silly. I bought this pen because I thought it might be a cool novelty. And at four bucks, what's the harm? It's very, very slim. Metal pen with a horrible fixed aerometric filler and a nib that is supposed to write in all 360 degrees. And it does. It writes horribly in all 360 degrees. It is scratchy times 360. So, an all-round failure. I've never seen anything like it. Julie, you failed. What a cool stocking stuffer for four bucks. And the inquiring mind's verdict is... No! And now we're on to one of my favorite Chinese pen brands, Jinhao. Just last week, I said the Jinhao 100 Centennial was now my IBM BB4 YPBP or Inquiring Minds Best Buy for your pen buck pen. But this pen isn't. This is the Jinhao 85. And where Majon might be guilty of slavishly copying other designs right down to those design flaws, I think Jinhao is not copying anything with this pen. I believe Parker redesigned the Parker 51 for their new Parker 51 and had Jinhao make the steel nib models where the gold nib models are made in Europe. The biggest difference is the Jinhao 85 has a metal barrel, whereas the Parker Steel version is acrylic. How else could Jinhao come out with almost an exact copy of the new Parker 51 months before Parker even released the new model? I read a post written by fountain pen expert Richard Binder on the new Parker 51. He writes the entire article before revealing that the pen was actually a Jinhao 85. Spoiler alert! He thought it was doggy doo-doo. My grandfather's work was doo-doo! This is the conundrum of 2021. Why would Parker, the maker of arguably the best fountain pen design of the 20th century, in an attempt to get in on the Parker 51 market owned by Hero, Jinhao, and Wingsung, design out all the features that made the Parker 51 great? This pen has a screw cap? Just plain dumb. The Parker 51 has one of the greatest capping mechanism of any fountain pen design ever. The pen won't post well. Even dumber. The reason that bad things happen to you 
is because you're a dumbass. <laughs> the Parker 51 is one of the greatest posting pens of all time, making the pen incredibly well balanced in the hand. This one's not balanced at all. So I don't get it. 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 What I do get is that I paid 10 bucks for this Jinhao 85 and the new Parker 51 steel nib version retails for $85 US. The Jinhao actually looks like the gold nib version of the new Parker 51, which retails for about $250 US. Your choice. All the same bad features, but with a 14 karat gold nib that is just as stiff as steel. And yes, I have held and written with the new Parker 51. And the Ink Acquiring Minds verdict on this pen is... You guessed it. No! Okay, so this is the last Chinese pen bashing for this video. And this one is painful, because this is Pen BBS, my favorite pen company. But this is probably my worst pen experience of 2021. This is the Pen BBS 535 Year of the Ox. If you watch my review of this pen, you'll know that I wasn't thrilled with the design of it. I believe I called it a dog's breakfast of a design. It's more like a dog's after breakfast, to be honest. All of a sudden, I don't quite feel like myself. Oh, I feel all right, and yet I, I, uh... But it does have an excellent nib. It holds a lot of ink, is very unique in a strange, wonky kind of way. But my pen nightmare happened after I posted my review. You see, I went to clean it out after the review with the idea of boxing it back up again. After all this, Pen BBS pen cost me $60 US plus shipping. And then this happened. This is the 535 that I received. You might not be able to see it clearly, but this piece is broken off of that piece. But if we look closer, there are two silicone O-rings on that piston right there. And they both have rolled off of that piston and gotten stuck in in the pen. So I cannot push it in, I cannot pull it out, I cannot unscrew it. Uh, the clutch mechanism broke off. This has been almost six months of trying to get this pen apart. So this pen is now a $60 piece of trash. Happy? Happy now? not happy. My pen friend and colleague Alan Light of What I Ink sent me a replacement as a gift as he had purchased extras, but I've not had the courage to ink this one. Thank you Alan for replacing this pen for me. And just to demonstrate, this is how it is supposed to work. Just like that. But on my pen, those two o-rings rolled back and got caught in there permanently. And the Inquiring Minds verdict on this pen? Yes, indeed. No! And my final pen disappointment of the year, 2021. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Drum roll. Oh, oh, uh... Drrr. The Lammy 2000. Do you know what Ralph just said? He said... I think I'm gonna leave town after this video is posted. If I was in your shoes, I'd be uh, leaving. What a good idea. Because th this Lammy 2000 is loved by millions and millions of pen fans and for good reason. It's an engineering marvel. In fact, that is the whole reason I bought the pen in the first place. Doodlebud did a really cool video disassembling a Lamy 2000 and showing in great detail why this is just a piece of engineering genius. The tech geek in me had to buy one just to take it apart, even though I really never liked the minimalist design aesthetic of the Lamy 2000. I thought I might change my mind once I had the pen in my hands and wrote with it. Nope. 
Nope. N O. It just reinforced my opinion that it's rather boring to look at and fairly slippery in the hand. Plus, the medium nib I had purchased wasn't even close to the medium nib on my Lamy Studio. The Lamy 2000 was a fire hose. Now, this Lamy Studio, however, I'm keeping this and growing to like it a lot, even though I had some reservations about it in my review. But the Lamy 2000, well, I'm afraid I sold it. So don't send me hate mail. And when I called him a dung beetle in Latin, I was so riled up, I almost started producing testosterone. The first internet flame war. That is as cruel as it is grammatical. And send. This is just my personal feeling. The pen and I just didn't get along. And at this price, the pen was probably the biggest pen purchase disappointment for me in 2021. Now it's in the hands of someone who can really enjoy it. And other than complete mechanical screw-ups, that's what all this comes down to. Subjective personal experiences and preferences. Let me know in the comments what disappointed you in 2021. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section, and you get cool emojis and badges too. No! And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. this.